Face the Nation with Bob Schieffer. And good morning again. Well, last night's debate in South Carolina was all about foreign policy, the things that got most of the attention, what to do about Iran's nuclear capability, and also who should we give foreign aid to. Uh, as we just saw, Rick Perry got a lot of attention when he talked about zeroing out of foreign aid to everyone. Uh, and at some point, people began to ask, including Israel. Well, here is what he said. Every country would start at zero. Obviously, Israel is a special ally, and my bet is that we would be funding them at, at some substantial level. But it makes sense for everyone to come in at zero and make your case. So, Governor Haley Barber down there in Mississippi, you've been in politics for a long time, and you well know when you start talking about cutting aid to Israel, it's sort of like talking about cutting people's Social Security. It's one of those third rails of American politics. Uh, did Rick Perry set himself up for a new controversy here with these remarks last night? Well, if I heard him right, he said, we're going to have what Jimmy Carter called zero-based budgeting and everybody will have to justify every year what they get. Uh, I don't think he, he talked about the special relationship we have with Israel, and I don't think there's any way in the world that a Republican president or Republican Congress would have a zero balance for Israel at the end of the day. But the idea of zero-based budgeting, starting every account out at zero, is not new or partisan, and a lot of people think it's a good idea. Uh, Governor O'Malley, you're a Democrat, and I must say, after those comments last night, boy, the Twitter lines and all the Internet lines begin to light up. What's he talking about? Uh, what's your take on that? Well, I, I think what's, what's happened in the course of these Republican presidential debates is a, a lot of sort of erratic statements, a lot of behavior that is uh, not really in keeping with some of the longer traditions of the party of Lincoln. So you see a real pandering to extremists. You see a pandering to the Tea Party extremes of the Republican Party. And so this is another one in a long series of things that don't really add up to a lot of practical sense. Lindsay, uh, Graham, I want you to listen to this because something else that got a lot of attention uh, last night was Iran and what to do about its nuclear capability. And we saw Mitt Romney, who's one of the Republican <coughs> frontrunners, say, if push came to shove and nothing else worked, we'd have to take military action against Iran. Listen to what he said here. And if all else fails, if after all of the work we've done, there's nothing else we can do besides mil take military action, then of course you take military action. It is unacceptable for Iran to have a nuclear weapon. Okay, Senator Graham, uh, does that mean uh, that we might get in a war with, uh, with Iran over uh, whether it is, that would be required to uh, take out their nuclear capability? Would you be for that? <clears throat> Totally, absolutely, without any doubt, the Iranians, if they develop a nuclear weapon, uh, Bob, the whole region is going to want a nuclear weapon. Then you march down the road of Armageddon. It, you open Pandora's box if you attack Iran. If they get a nuclear weapon, you empty Pandora's box. That's the world we live in. So I support the idea of a military option at the last resort. But now their capability is so redundant, you'd have to do more than go after the nuclear program. You have to neuter this regime, destroy the Air Force, sink their Navy, go after the Revolutionary Guard and try to get the people in the country to overthrow the regime. We need a regime change. If they get a nuclear weapon, uh, the world is going to go into darkness. You know, uh, uh, one of the things that the people have been asking about all week is did uh, Rick Perry sort of end his chances to get the nomination with some of the stumbles he made when he couldn't remember uh, some of the things that he himself had advocated to reduce the size of government. I want to I want to get your all's take on this. Uh, that came up last night when Scott Pelley of CBS News, one of the moderators, asked him a question. If you eliminate the Department of Energy, Glad you remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some time to think about it, sir. Me too. <laughs> So he got a big round of applause. Uh, uh, Governor Barber, uh, is Rick Perry back in the race now, or, or what's the deal here? Well, we'll see. I mean, he's, uh, he obviously is right to be self-deprecating about it, to make fun of himself for making a mistake. Americans appreciate that, that you can uh, admit you're wrong and, and make, make light of yourself. Uh, how he comes back remains to be seen. 
You know, Bob, we do have the, the habit this election year in the Republican side <coughs> for thinking that whatever happened in the last seven days means we know what's going to happen in the next seven weeks, uh, that it will show us that path. That hasn't been the case. I don't expect it to be the case. And so we'll just have to see if Rick Perry's uh, strategy now, some people are saying he's going to focus totally on Iowa. If he does, you know, does he get it back going there? He's, he's, got, he's a guy with a really good record as governor who has stumbled. We'll see. Uh, governor, uh, Senator Graham, what, what's, your, what's your takeaway here on, just on Rick Perry and where he is now? He did better last night. I think it was a reassuring debate. I thought he was very good on foreign policy. Time and money. He's got time and he's got money. And if you got time and money, anything can happen in politics. He's got a good record to sell. It's being uh, Texas governor. He needs more uh, good debates. But Newt was gone just a couple of months ago. So I've been with McCain where he was out sixth in a fifth person race. And you never know what's going to happen. He's got time and money and talent. So I think he can come back. Governor O'Malley, I suppose you have some thoughts on what you hope happens here. What, what is your takeaway from these debates so far from the Democratic side? Well, I thought one of the more jarring things, I mean, for all of the humor and the self-deprecating uh, uh, back and forth that you just saw in that clip, what was really disturbing is how little serious thought many of these Republican candidates who hold themselves out as the commander-in-chief that would be responsible for managing this big, complex organization, how little thought they've given to what it is they would actually do. That's what I took away from the debate so far. There's been no new ideas about job creation, no new ideas about growing our middle class, no new ideas about reinvesting in this great idea of America. And until that happens, uh, you're going to see a very fluid field over there. And that's why you see the rise of people like Herman Cain as a protest vote, because no one on their side yet is offering any new ideas or real solutions. Uh, I have to say that on the one point that Governor O'Malley makes here, nobody seems to be creating much excitement, including Mitt Romney, who seems to be sort of stuck just below 20% uh, in the polls, uh, Governor Barber. What do you think? Who's up, who's down right now, and, and where does this race go from here? Well, Bob, as I've told you before, this reminds me of a lot of past <clears throat> Democratic presidential contests, like Jimmy Carter in 76, Bill Clinton in 92, where there is not really a front runner. Uh, uh, Mitt Romney is the best known of our candidates, not a true front runner. And what we see people doing, more than I've ever seen in my life, is instead of saying, which one agrees with me the most, which one do I like the most, they're saying, which one's got the best chance to beat Obama? That's what matters to me. Well, who, like who do you think has sort of the best Romney I was going to say, it looks like a lot of people have kind of set Romney to the side and say, I know a lot about him. I want to learn some more about these others. And that's why we're kind of going through Cinderella trying on the slipper. And it looks like maybe Newt's time's next and we'll go along. Then after we've gone through that cycle, people will seriously focus on, uh, is it really Romney who's the most electable? Or is there somebody else that's come out that I think has the best chance to beat Obama? If right. this election's about President Obama's policies and his record, whoever we nominate will get elected. All right. I want to ask you, uh, uh, Senator Graham, in about 30 seconds, uh, where, what's your takeaway from this? Where do you think this goes? Last night, Ronald Reagan would have loved this debate. Six months ago, I was really worried that our party was drifting. Last night was a hawkish debate that talked about listening to commanders and not facing decisions in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan on polls. This president has rejected solid uh, uh, military commander advice to help his own reelection. I think we're going to win because the policies that he enacted, President Obama enacted in his first two years, have damned this economy for now and in the future. So we need a solid person on the economy, someone who will say, I will listen to the generals, not make poll driven decisions. He's right. going to be a one term president if we get a solid nominee. All right. I want to thank